In this screencast, collage and juxtaposition will be um, accessed through historical works, uh, through pieces of popular culture, um, and then also we'll look at some student works. When two or more elements or images are juxtaposed, the meaning of the new image is totally reliant on what the pieces mean and also what the pieces of the image mean when they are in relation to one another. A lot of times we'll see repetition of form um, and that might produce an overall patterning um, and in many cases that patterning is used as a kind of static background uh, that will provide a little bit of, um, of kind of ease for the eye uh, so that a focal point can be achieved in a different part of the image. Photo collage or photo montage um, has been around almost since the dawn of photography. Not quite, but, but close enough. This work by Oscar Rylander uh, from the 1850s is a kind of seamless photo montage of 32 prints. Um, back then, this would have been called a combination print. This was not photoshopped, obviously. There's no photoshop in the 1800s. Um, but this has the look of a photoshopped work. Um, in other words, if we're sort of aware that there are so many different pieces of imagery that are stitched together, the seamlessness of that effort um, um, almost kind of takes on the, the, the sort of workings of what we would think of today as a digital collage. In opposition to that, um, cut and paste artists, and in this case a Dada artist, Hannah Hawk, created work where the seams of the photographs or the, the artifacts in the image are highly evident. Um, this work from the 1919-1920 um, really kind of reveals where the images came from. Um, there's no kind of hoax uh, or trickery happening. Um, instead, the viewer is very aware of the different pieces of the pictures that have been put together. So there are these two ways of approaching photo collage. One has a fancy word attached to it. <laughs> okay, so verisimilitude um, is a word that we can, uh, we can use this word to refer to truth-likeness. Not truthfulness, but truth-likeness. And in relation to collage, this is when we're looking for seamless blending, we're looking for um, that kind of trickery where photographs blend and merge uh, into, into one another. Um, and so we have really real looking altered realities. Um, and two great examples of this um, and, and from the world of advertising um, and entertainment are the Dove Evolution campaign, which you can uh, look up on YouTube, um, and then the parody of that campaign by Simon Willow or Willows, um, the slob evolution campaign. Those videos um, really focus on the ways in which this kind of seamless blending and um, photoshopping, literally photoshopping, um, is used to kind of trick the viewer into thinking uh, what a really real looking altered reality looks like. Jerry Yulesman's photographs um, starting in the 50s and, and all the way through today, um, Jerry Yulesman makes these really beautiful, intricate uh, photographs using multiple enlargers. Um, they're all silver gelatin prints. Um, uh, to my knowledge, there's no Photoshop involved. Maybe he's using Photoshop lately, but I, I think uh, really the, uh, the wonder of Yulesman's work is that he's been doing this kind of photo collage um, since the days of the darkroom. Um, and quite effectively. Um, and so here we see that kind of seamless blending of this fantasy world. In opposition to that, you might see works uh, like the Monty Python uh, Flying Circus uh, credits or theme. Terry Gilliam's animations often had these really outrageous pieces of imagery that would fall into place or be collaged next to one another in such a way, um, kind of like Hannah Hawk's work, where you could, you could see the edges of the pieces and, and there's something funny about the juxtaposition of these sort of cut off heads and giant feet. So keeping those ways of thinking about photo collage in mind, I want to show you some works uh, that my students have created. 
a really kind of common project is a, an editorial illustration where the students are given uh, an article to read and then uh, they have to illustrate that article with a photo collage and they can use uh, these ideas they can they can use the idea of verisimilitude and try to create a blended seamless kind of image or they can take a more cut and paste approach um, of course given the time and semester that I assign this project more people go for the cut and paste approach because we haven't learned the tools quite as well as as we you know, will would like to learn them um, so what I'd like you to see here is uh, the way that the students use patterning and repetition um, in some cases to create a background like in this image a sort of background of that sky over and over and over again and it in this sort of digital sky this digitally altered sky um, that creates a kind of um, pattern uh, on top of which we'll focus on the hand and the package to nowhere. We have two layers of patterning here um, and this contrast in scale differentiates the two. The larger pieces in the background, the phones and the, and the digital screens um, creating a sort of context, a background context, and then the smaller kind of thought bubbles with all of the social networking icons um, repeated a uh, little bit of a smaller scale and so those seem to be grouped together maybe in the midground and then our, our subject in the foreground. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I'm not totally hot on this area on the top, but I really like the way the student thought of two halves of a body uh, coming together. And so um, looking at how um, in terms of patterning, we can also think about the repetition of, of form. It doesn't have to be the same body, but repetitions of a form of a body. Uh, in order to see that as a, as a whole or as a new piece. Uh, here are the repetition on both sides of the page of the column. The columns sort of each holding their own statues, um, creating a sense of uh, symmetry on the page and a sort of duality. Um, again, the patterning in the background of that sky, tiled sky. Uh, very small uh, type in contrast, those ones and zeros in contrast with the very large uh, globe that's held up by our uh, superhero in the foreground, the repetition of, of form uh, and the change in scale as we shift in perspective from the foreground to the background. And uh, here again, that repetition of form, we have um, the characters in the foreground repeated with their signage. Uh, the uh, this is maybe my favorite part here the sort of uh, knocked out words in these these forms that are sort of overlaid uh, and then repeated again up here on the top in terms of a shift in scale and in this case we see um, you know that repetition of form with the the sort of wavy lines and the computer pieces uh, but also we get a contrast through isolation. So in this case, we're going to get a lot of contrast because there's so much white space. Um, so not to, to put a total emphasis on contrast through scale or repetition and no repetition, but also what's happening in the negative space. A lot of times we can achieve a focal point by isolating uh, something in the foreground or something in a, a sort of larger space. Um, so I'm going to put this on YouTube. I don't really have permission from the professionals, and hopefully they will be um, all right with me using their work for educational purposes. And as always, thank you to the students who've contributed works uh, for the knowledge base of future students.